Well, thank you guys for coming out tonight. My name is Rachel Gordon. I'm Texas the Assistant Director of Texas Health and Environment Alliance. Um, I'm here today to give you guys just a few little updates on the San Jacinto River Waste Pits. Um, and I'm just going to start for those of you who don't know who we are. Um, Thea is a regional nonprofit, and our mission is to protect public health and the environment by engaging, educating, and empowering impacted communities to advocate effectively for the cleanup of historical contamination. So basically what we do is we come into communities that are impacted by historical toxic waste sites like Superfund sites, and we help the communities, we educate them on the problem and what's going on, and then we help them um, by using grassroots organizing, strategic science, and media exposure to get these sites cleaned up on a much faster timeline than what you would normally see um, at these sites. So I just want to start with a little bit of history of the San Jacinto River Waste Pits. Um, they were formed in the 1960s by Waste Management and International Paper where um, these companies were dumping paper mill waste into unlined pits that were next to the river, but over time the river meanders and it took over uh, it took over the waste pits and so now the northern waste pits are completely within the river and leaching dioxin and PCBs and other contaminants into the water. Um, this causes a lot of issues, not only for the local environment, but it also causes a lot of issues for the local residents as it has contaminated the fish um, and all of the seafood that are in the San Jacinto River and touching those waters as well. Um, and that contamination has made it so that these fish consumption advisories show that you can't eat any um, oysters, crab, blue crab, uh, shellfish or any other kind of fish, especially the bottom feeders that are in these waters because they are contaminated and they're not safe to consume. Um, it's also led to groundwater contamination which has affected the residents that are around here um, and getting groundwater from groundwater wells on their properties. So where we last left off, back, I believe we had our last meeting together from FIA was back in October, um, and the EPA has been here and held a community, a community meeting since then, but where we left off was that um, the responsible parties needed to turn in the remainder of the 90% design, which was the northwest corner portion. Um, they had left that part out when they submitted their 90% design last summer, and so, um, we had been waiting for that. They turned in that portion and their remedy to fix that northwest corner to remediate it was to cap it. And the EPA immediately said, no, we're not going to cap it. That is not okay. And um, it is not, it does not align with what is dictated in the record of decision from 2017, which is that um, it needs to be excavated and the waste needs to actually be removed from the river and not left in there. Um, so the EPA has been going back and forth with the responsible parties a lot about whether or not um, removing the waste in its entirety down to a recreational level, level for the northern pits is even feasible. The EPA says that it is and the responsible parties keep arguing and saying that it is not. Um, and so the EPA sent a letter to them, to the responsible party saying, we need to get a third party reviewer to come in and look over um, what your design plan is saying, what you're saying, and why it's not feasible. And so they basically just want another set of eyes of people to come in and say whether or not, um, from an engineering perspective, if removing and excavating the waste from the northwest corner is safe and whether or not hydraulic heave and some of the other issues that the responsible parties, contractors, have said um, will come up, they uh, basically have hit an impasse with the responsible parties. Um, the EPA says that, like I said, they say it's feasible, they say that, they, that you should be able to remove this waste, and the responsible parties are saying that we can't. Um, so when the responsible parties responded, their letter basically just said that they disagree with the EPA, that um, they think that they have provided enough evidence to show that hydraulic heave and some of these other issues are big enough problem that it will stop um, 
it will have to stop the excavation. Um, but they did agree to meet with, uh, with the EPA and jointly pick that third party reviewer. So that's what we're kind of waiting for right now is to see um, who they pick as their reviewer. I know that they have picked one that had some old connections with the responsible parties, so I believe that the EPA said no, that you can't use them. So now we're just waiting for them to get um, whichever their next uh, selection is for them. Um, so this looks like a lot of information, but it's good information. Um, the Southern Waste Pit, the remedial action started earlier this year, so they actually, as Many of the residents have seen there's a bunch of trucks going in and out. Um, they finished the construction. And this right here is just a list of all of the things that uh, they have completed since we last met. Uh, they were able to install the security fencing, the silt fencing, um, the water treatment facility on site that will be treating the contact water and the water that is uh, coming out of the river as they're excavating. Um, they constructed the site roads and um, they put up all the super fun signage to let people know what's going on there and let them know that um, there are these activities going on in this area. Um, they also removed all of the vegetation and debris that was in the way so they could easily excavate this area. Are you saying, Rachel, that they haven't dug anything up yet? I believe that they have. Um, and based off of what Greg was telling me is that he's seen truckloads going out already. Um, and as we found earlier, the waste from the Southern Waste Pit are going to um, a, there's two separate landfills. One of them is in Beaumont and one of them is in Angleton. Um, and so if you see any trucks, that's what Greg was asking earlier. Is, um, he's been seeing some trucks going west, so we think that that's probably the trucks that are going to the Angleton facility. So unfortunately, when you have progress, you also have some issues. Um, we were informed that on March 20th, there was a release of contact water um, at the Southern Pit excavation site. Um, it impacted less than 480 square feet on site, and there were no impacts off site from what we learned. Um, and it was only a release of about one to 200 gallons of that contact water. Um, they reported that they had this, uh, this release control within two hours of it happening, and there was a, an EPA contractor on site when it happened, so they were able to respond much more quickly. Um, what happened, somebody left a valve open on the water treatment system pipeline, and when they had water going through there, it just came right out, um, and so the plans going forward for how to prevent this from happening again. We have, um, they have implemented, the responsible parties contractor, GHD, has implemented uh, daily inspections to make sure that these valves are closed. Um, they, the EPA is reviewing the emergency response plan to make sure that they have protocols in there to make sure that if there is another release or if there's another spill that they are adequately prepared to respond to it in a timely and a safe manner. Um, they're looking into putting locking mechanisms and caps on those open valve ends. Um, and the EPA is still coordinating with all of the involved parties, but they have reported to us that the site has been stabilized and that um, once we get the results of the testing that they're doing, we will definitely be sharing that with the community. Um, but as of right now, we haven't received those results yet. Um, but like I said, the EPA has mentioned and reported that the site is stabilized and they don't think that there have been any off-site impacts from this happening. A question. Yeah. Do we have an inspector on site every day, all the time, while work is going on? I am not sure. I know that the day that this happened, um, that they did have an EPA contractor on site. I'm not sure if the, they are on site every single day with the remedial, um, I'm sorry, with the responsible parties contractors. 
Um, they just happen to be that time. I have not heard um, whether or not they're there consistently, but I can definitely find out for you. Oh. When? A month ago? Early? Late February, early March? Mm -hmm. I was coming back from uh, uh, Bay Town. It was a big dust cloud, dirt cloud. Are there any air monitors? Are there going to be any air monitors? And if they're following the procedures that they're supposed to be, I wouldn't think that there would be a dust cloud because if they're supposed to be monitoring to make sure that those trucks are clean and nothing leaves that site, if there's a big dust cloud, that's not happening. Right. And so. Yeah, um, I would have to look. I'm not 100% sure if they are doing air monitoring or not. I know that they're doing, or they're supposed to be doing at least um, like their own air monitoring to make sure that levels within the area are okay. Um, but I'm not sure who they're reporting that to or if they're reporting that to anybody. Um, so I can find that out for you though. Okay. Well, well that was, I mean, it was huge, the amount of dirt that was... And it was coming from the southern site? Yes, it was, it was from there. And, uh, I don't know if uh, they're ready. Are they wearing protective gear? Have you noticed? They're not? I haven't seen them. They're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Yeah, he was you saying go over there fairly often. Yeah, so. he was saying that they're supposed to be wearing protective gear. Yeah, but they're not over, you know, yeah. they're he's they're a, they've got screens on some of the, the fences and stuff where you can't see through it. And then they got dirt piled up pretty high, you know, where you can't see where they're, they're picking. That might make sense as to why there was a dust cloud. If they had dirt piled up, if it was a windy day. Well, they need a drone. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, he's working on getting some drones. But they've been all the time. So if they're not controlling the, the, the dust from where they're digging, you're not taking the problem. <laughs> thank you. Um, definitely something that we're going to need to look into then, because um, thank you for letting us, for letting me know that you were seeing that, because I don't live over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always thought like, because we were coming back from Baytown, that, you know, that was when we were sick and I didn't call. <laughs> I guess on that same vein, this morning when I was going down I can I mean a huge line of dump trucks lined up on Market Street looks to be normal dump trucks. So what's to prevent the dust coming out as they're going wherever they're going with full truckloads? So I know that Greg you had said that there that the trucks that you've seen leaving the site have been like covered. They're water packed containers on the back of a trailer. But you said you're seeing like regular dump oh, trucks. Oh there was at least fifteen dump, regular oh, dump regular, trucks. Yeah, they're bringing dirt in. I, I, oh, I, I think that might have been when they were bringing in. dirt in. They, they, they build impounds and all that, and, and, and I think when they dig it out, they're putting fresh dirt back in. Yeah, so they um, they had to build roads and they had to build the water treatment facility, so they had to build a pad. So that's probably where a lot of that dirt, like you were saying, if they're bringing in dirt. The that's thing they hold the water in is about it's, it's got it, it's probably an acre anyway, and it's the, 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 the plastic lined and. It's got a berm around it that's probably six or eight feet tall. When it's way down pictures. there close to Kirby. <laughs> He's working on it. We got permission. We got permission from the EPA and then from the um, the landowner. The landowner. So he should be able to get that uh, relatively soon for us. Fingers crossed, because I want to see it too. I want to see what's going on over there. <laughs> something that any of us want to hear. We definitely want to make sure that the cleanup that's happening is safe and that it's not um, endangering anybody um, around <laughs> or the environment. Um, so just keep in mind that the waste pits remediation is one of the most complex engineering projects right now in America, but it's not impossible. It's very possible to get it done and get it cleaned up. Um, and so we are going to continue doing the work that we do and watching over the site, talking with community members to make sure we know what's going on 
um, and making sure that this site gets cleaned up safely and effectively and all the way down to the standards that they should be cleaned up to that are set out in the record of decision. So, um, did you want to take a picture of that? Yes. <laughs> I know that we're all tired of hearing that because that's all it's been, um, but we're waiting for that third party review of the 90% design at the Northern Pit to happen. Um, once that's done, we'll be waiting for the completion of the 100% remedial design and getting that um, approved and making sure that we are reviewing it and getting that information to the community as well to make sure that you guys know what's going on and what the plan is for this Northern Pit and getting it cleaned up. Um, and then we are going to continue to monitor the removal of waste from the southern pit, um, try to get more information for you guys on what exactly is going on and what kind of risks we could be seeing because of things in the air and making sure that we don't have any more spills or, or releases like that happened earlier in March. Um, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to everybody who was able to make it out to our annual fundraiser. Uh, clean mud for bugs. These are some of the pictures that we got. There's more on our website of uh, some of the um, community members that were there. We also had a large group of volunteers that helped us out on that day, which was fantastic. Um, and our staff, everybody had a great time. And we were able to honor uh, Harris County Attorney Christian Menefee as our very first Crawdaddy of the Year for all of he's done to help us out with our communities and all that he does to fight for environmental justice within Harris County. Um, if you did not get to go and you would still like to support Thea, we have our Clean Mud for Bugs limited edition second annual t-shirts. We have some still available if you would like one. Um, and we also have some other Thea swag and, and things over there that are available for donations as well. Does anybody have any more questions for me? Or comments? Or concerns? What's the schedule of the 100% review on the um, They have not released that yet to my knowledge uh, because they're still waiting on getting that third party review for the 90% design, so it kind of depends on how long that takes. And once we get approval on the 90% design, that's when they'll put out the deadlines for the final remedial design and getting that approved. Yes? You said they're actually taking out stuff from the southern pitch? Yes. Where is it going? Um, there are two sites. One of them is uh, in Beaumont and one of them is in Angleton. And I can get you the actual full names of those sites in a second. One of them is Republic and one of them is Seabreeze. The one in Angleton is Seabreeze. Are they just taking it and dumping it? <laughs> yep. As far as I know, yes. Okay. So we're moving it from one place to the other? I got one more comment about the dust cloud and they can't determine whether it's contaminated or non-contaminated. These people live right next door to it. Mm -hmm. If you are saying it's going to be done 100% safely, wouldn't you have the particulate monitors going before you begin? Then we wouldn't have to, if it's clean dust, you could prove it. Mm -hmm. Instead of them finding out 10 years from now, oh, it wasn't clean. Yeah. Because the dioxins are not in the water. The dioxins are in the mud. Mm -hmm. So the mud creates dust. Dust is what we ought to worry about. Yeah, that's not, definitely not the wet stuff. Yeah, it's definitely something that we need to uh, follow with the EPA on to make sure that they have particulate monitors and stuff out there and functioning, and that that's actually being reported somewhere so that. Wouldn't that be common sense before you even start? You would think. You would think. Well then, that 100% <laughs> yeah, safe might not help them sleep. And, and that, that was the thing, is in the reports that I read, which I've read all of them, but um, I went 
last few ones. But anyway, the ones that I've read, I didn't see or I don't recall mention of air monitoring. Okay. On there. I feel like I've seen so, some in the remedial design plan for the northern pit about air monitoring, oh. um, but I would need to look in the southern pit design to see what they have written about the air monitors for that. Because that, that I mean, I wouldn't even, it was when I saw the dust, I thought, oh, wait a minute, all this, there's not, I shouldn't be seeing dust. Yeah. Dirt. Definitely. Uh, you know, get cloudy. <coughs> I thought the trucks were supposed to be washed and everything. And if they're loaded and transporting the contaminated mud, they said the trucks are supposed to be clean before they leave the site and get on the road. Mm -hmm. Is somebody double checking that? Because that's, like I said, if they got mud all over them, contaminated mud, and they're putting it on the highway from here to Baltimore, mm -hmm. that's not doing anybody good. Is, is that being logged and proved. It should be being monitored. Should be is not what I'm asking. I would have to double check for you and I have to, to look because I'm not like I'm not on site so I'm not the one I'm not we're not the ones doing the cleanup and, and monitoring that so we have to check with the EPA and that's why community members are so important to when this happens because like I said I don't I don't live in this community uh, so if you see something, say something, let us know, like when we have a dust cloud or something like that, so we can call the EPA and ask them, hey, is this being monitored? Do we know what's going on? What is this coming from and what's in it? Uh, they can't answer those questions. That's when we get on them to make sure that they can. Um, and so I was unaware of the dust cloud, and so, but those are the things that we call the EPA about to make sure that they have somebody checking those things. Well, why isn't there an EPA representative here? That I don't know. <laughs> and, and, and I have, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable with the air monitoring being done by the responsible parties, mm -hmm. that it would be a third party a third air monitor. Okay. That, I mean, because their history is not well. <laughs> right. And that might be something that we could talk with some of our, our um, coalition partners with as well, like Airlines Houston. I know they do a lot of air monitoring, um, so it might be something worth mentioning or bringing up to them that we could bring up to them to see um, what we could possibly do together to have maybe a third party that is disinterested in it to double check and make sure that things are actually being controlled the way that they're supposed to. Okay, going back to Seabreeze and Angleton, if this is a normal uh, landfill, which I believe it is, then what precautions are being taken there? Because if they're just dumping it in the hole or on the pile, you've got the bulldozer operators that are spreading the mulch that is used as, as fuel and bedding between layers. You've got various different parties out there. Are any of those parties, the truck drivers, the bulldozer operators, any of those aware of what's coming in and being uh, notified to take appropriate actions because talking about this dust cloud that's absolutely happening wherever this is going right um, so and i've got a special concerns because i know uh one of the, a group of truck drivers that actually takes product out there for that landfill so and i have not been made aware that they're they've ever been notified. So that's a huge concern. Well, and it's also a concern for the workers over at Southwest Shipyards. Yeah. I mean, they're right across the street. Literally right across the street. Yeah. No, I definitely agree. And I know that these truckloads are supposed to be traveling with a form that says what it is and the dangers of it. But I also know that the waste from the waste pits has not been classified as like toxic waste, as I know most people know, um, that it is considered a, a class two non-hazardous waste, I believe. And so it is, um, I do believe that it is just going to a regular landfill that is qualified to take that class two non-hazardous waste. Um, but they are supposed to be traveling with information about what the waste is and how to take the proper precautions to keep it contained and keep it safe. Um, but it would be something that we need to make sure that 
the responsible parties are following what they wrote out in their design plan of the transportation and offsite disposal. Okay, I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Has anybody seen the dump trucks? You have? Have you seen you've seen the dump trucks, right? Dump trucks? The Whatever's calling the dog. Because all I've seen is the barge down there. I haven't seen any. Yeah, they're trucks traveling. They're hauling them out of their water tight containers. In what? Water tight containers. Okay. They put one on the back of a trailer. Eight, you know, an eighteen wheeler trailer. They got one of them on it. And they I seen it on one uh, heading west on I ten. Getting on right there at Monmouth. I haven't seen them. I've seen them dredging, you know, getting it, but I haven't seen them loading anything. I've been looking for that. But as far as Beaumont, aren't they going to a place that specifically takes this kind of stuff? So that's what I was saying, um, that they're going to landfills that are qualified to handle class two non-hazardous waste because that's what the waste from the waste pits was deemed um, during the waste classification. So it's not, even though there are dioxins and stuff in this waste, it's still not considered a toxic or a hazardous waste, so it's not being treated and having to go to a more specialized landfill like a hazardous waste would. So, um, yeah. Does that mean they're going to get away with that on the northern pits too? Yes. It's not going to be considered toxic waste? No. It has been classified as class 2 non-hazardous at the northern pits. So, so essentially what we're doing is we're cleaning up one Superfund site while creating a new Superfund site. Amen. Two no. new ones. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes, so, if you're removing the waste from one super fun site. It doesn't make you contaminate it. Because they It ain't no different than taking it over here to Highway 90 and dumping it on their damn uh, garbage dump out there. That's where they're taking it over there in Beaumont and that's where they're taking it in Angleton is a garbage dump. <clears throat> it will be covered up That's not true. with regular dirt eventually. But it'll when be covered up with with uh, Garbage. But that's how we wound up in the situation that we're in now. So the, I know that one of the big differences is that most landfills, as far as I know, that landfills are lined, and so that keeps certain things from leaching outside of it, and the waste pits are not lined, so that's one of the big problems is that because the water is now, you know, um, engulfing the way, the nor at least the northern waste pit, that that water, there's nothing keeping it, there's no liner or anything in that pit to keep that waste or the contaminants in there. Um, and I believe that's what, at least the slight difference is, is that at the landfills, they are lined and they have to take more precautions to make sure there isn't leaching and leaking out of the landfills. They are constantly watering to keep the, the dust and stuff down mm -hmm. daily, all the time. And as you watch these mounds go up, you can also watch the runoff mm -hmm. in the surrounding area, the surrounding ditches. So they may be lining the pit of trash, but as it builds up, they're constantly having runoff day in and day out, 100% of the time. So They, they raise them liners as they go. They cannot put a landfill in without a liner. No matter if it was 150 feet tall, they would be the liner all the way around it, all the way to the top. But they got runoff. All the time, I can I can show okay, you that. Okay, but the, the runoff is it's not going to be that bad because once it's filled up, once you're once you filled it up to here with the dirt and stuff that's coming out of that thing, you're going to be putting garbage on top of it, on top of it, until it gets to where they can't put anything else up there, and it'll all be lined up. If everything, if it, like I said, if it's 150 feet tall, there'll be a liner around the whole thing until it gets to the top. Now, you, see, you may have minimal runoff at the top, but your stuff is down here. It's not going to affect anything that's up here. All you're going to have is garbage runoff. And I'll be honest with you, people throw more chemicals away in their garbage than we're going to be putting in that place down there. That's doesn't a fact. make it right to move our problem to somebody else's backyard. Yeah. I don't know where that dump is at down there, <laughs> but if it's like the one out in Beaumont, 
It's way out in the middle of nowhere. There ain't nothing out there. And it Today is, it is something but not tomorrow. It is something that we we're still looking into and, and double checking is the classification of the waste just because it seems like it should be classified differently based off of some of the criteria and so it's something that we've looked into and, and it's something that we've been fighting for a long time. So it's definitely a shared concern. Well, how is that battle going? I know it's been going on a while and that y'all had specialists looking at it. And it just it depends on which list you're looking at, mm -hmm. which department's list you're looking at, as to whether it's the, the highly. So here you know, in Texas, it goes off of the TCEQ, so it goes off of um, how RICRA defines, or the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act defines um, hazardous waste, and so that's where. Um, in Texas, our regulations are not as strong as federally, and so um, that's where they ran into the discrepancies between think, we think it should be classified as hazardous versus it did not get classified. There's something in with the state regulations that made that happen. So is the site a federal site or a state site? It is a federal site, but... So shouldn't they go with federal classification? That's what I would think, and I would have to definitely look into that more for you to give you a more concrete answer. Um, but from what I have been told, they followed the state regulations because that's where, um, I believe it's because that's where the waste is staying within Texas. It's not crossing state lines, so it stays in Texas, and they use Texas disposal regulations to go about that. <laughs> okay. All right. Does anybody have a question? A different issue that I bring up almost every single time. Tons of people fish right over there on Market Street. I bet there were 10 or 12 cars there the other day. Okay. Nobody seems to. So we will care. be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we will be starting our fish consumption advisory outreach again um, over the summer um, and basically what we do is we go out to those people and we just make sure that they know that there are fish consumption advisories and that it's not safe to consume any of the fish or seafood. Um, a lot of the people we run into do say that they're just doing it recreationally. Um, or just, you know, catch and release just out there to have fun. Uh, but the people with the coolers, we don't necessarily believe us when they tell us that. So we provide them with more information. Um, but because it's not a fishing ban, there's really not a whole lot that we can do other than just give them that information and hope that they understand why it's not safe. I don't know anybody that's going to sit over there all afternoon to catch the fish and put them back in there. That's hey, some people on. do it. <laughs> And you say something to them, and they say, well, I've been eating it for 30 years, and they ain't killed me yet. Yeah. I've seen them fishing right at the big... I've seen them using that, the that humongous, the fish humongous sign line. for rod holder. And they're fishing so. right at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. it's in English and Spanish. Well, hell, they tie their boat to the buoy that goes around that one on the northern pit. Yeah, I've seen it. I know that. there's a... Or move yeah. the buoys. Yeah, there's the a buoys. picture in the Chronicle where it was, I think, when we held a press conference and they were driving back and there was somebody fishing over the buoys into, into the waste pit. So we try our best to make sure that people are informed, but we agree it's still definitely an issue and, and people don't take it as seriously as we think that they should, but uh, there's only so much that we can do and we just stick to trying to educate them about the health and how it could impact their families. Oh. Is there a way to put a sign on the buoys that it's a super fun site and a fishing advisory on the, the buoys? Not, not every one, but maybe one ever so far because those orange buoys are out there, but you may not know why those mm -hmm. orange buoys are out there. I've, and I've thought about that too before when I've seen it that, you know, there's 